This is going to be a quick video on just a sub account overview. So where's everything at? What does everything do um, in, inside the sub account? And we'll also touch on sub account settings, probably do that in a, in a separate video. Um, but let's just go through everything here on the left so you guys understand what it is, what it does. Most of it's self-explanatory, but let's jump into it. So Launchpad, this is where you can uh, add in let's say there are other platforms, I guess, uh, other softwares, you can connect them and integrate them into Go High Level. So if it's Google My Business, if it's a Facebook uh, account, um, if you want to connect Stripe, um, you probably won't be doing that. In, in our case, as marketing agency owners, we're not really going to be doing this because we're not going to be charging um, on our customers' behalf. But I guess there could be specific use cases to where we do this, to where if your client wants to charge fifty dollars when people book in um, we can technically connect their stripe and we can collect that payment for them so i guess there's a use case for that um, but if you guys want to connect anything you can do that on launchpad you can also do these in different areas um in the sub account which which you'll see but um yeah this is how to connect outside software dashboard really no functionality here this is just going to give you an overview on how your campaigns are performing Conversations, uh, self-explanatory here, right? This is where you communicate with people. Uh, when you purchase phone numbers, and we'll have a video on that, uh, when you purchase phone numbers, all of the conversations will come through here. If you have it linked to a Facebook account, uh, the conversations will also come through here if you have the permissions set up to allow for that. Same with Instagram um, and TikTok. So this, is, this will act as an all-in-one inbox. Um, for your specific client, for your specific sub account, based on what you have connected to it. Manual actions. Um, so if you guys set up to manually call a lead at a certain time, the action will show up here. Um, and you, so you could have a VA just come in in here. All they have to do is navigate to the manual actions tab and call through the leads um, if you have it set up that way. And we'll have specific videos on how to get this set up. Um, and some pros and cons to manual actions because there are a few cons. I actually hate them, but I'll have a video breaking down uh, exactly why. Trigger links. So think of this. Uh, we'll have a specific video about trigger links, but think of them as kind of like a bit.ly link. Um, basically just shortens things and uh, allows you to put them, uh, put some extra code into the links for tracking, but we'll have a specific video on this. You guys will be using trigger links quite a bit. They're very useful. Calendars, self-explanatory. Contacts, self-explanatory. Opportunities, so this is uh, kind of like your funnel in a way. Um, you'll see where leads are in the process. So if they opted in, they'll be right here. If they booked an appointment, they'll be right here. If they signed up with your client and they became a new customer, they'll be right here. And we can add and remove as much as we want in here. Um, and we'll have a specific video about pipelines and opportunities. Payments. Um, so if you guys wanted to collect payments for your customers on your customer's behalf, that could be uh, done through here. Um, we'll have a specific video about all this because there's obviously quite a bit um, to cover. Really, we won't be using this a whole lot because everybody just kind of uses a signing software for contracts and then just we're just invoicing through Stripe. Um, but I will cover this a little bit in case anybody does want to use it. Marketing, um, very similar to the Launchpad. If you guys want to connect accounts, you can do that here. Um, but mainly this is used for like more social media management, if you will. If you Basically, you can schedule posts um, for the social accounts. Uh, email campaigns can be run through here. Uh, we'll have a specific video on email campaigns. Uh, templates, trigger links. Uh, we did cover these in the conversations. Um, Go High Level just loves to put things in multiple places, so they're, they're also located here. Automation. Uh, automation is, we're going to have a number of videos on automation. There's a lot that goes into these. This is basically what makes Go High Level so amazing is that you can automate so much of the lead nurturing process, the follow up process. Um, and it's really just a, uh, you can create so much quality of life with automations. But we'll have a few videos breaking this down. 
sites. So if you guys want to run funnels, if you guys want to have uh, a website, if you guys want to run forms or have a survey, uh, that is all done right in here. Uh, a few other things as well. But um, we're, we're mainly going to have uh, be breaking down funnels. Um, I'm going to skip websites. If you guys want to build out a website, uh, you can do that on Go High Level, but I'm not going to have like a specific website building course inside this GHL course for obvious reasons. Uh, same thing with blogs. Uh, Client Portal will have a video on this. Um, forms will have a video on this. Surveys will have a video on this. Okay. Uh, memberships. So if you guys wanted to uh, host like a like a course. Uh, you could do that through here. This is fairly new, um, but I will have a short video breaking what uh, breaking down what all this does. Okay, reputation. So if you guys want to run review campaigns for your clients, you can do that here. Um, I'm actually going to have a video on how you can just send them a, a simple link, uh, send the the uh, the leads a simple link, and then the leads can respond back with a number like a rating one through five and then based on their response they either get sent a google link a google review link or not but uh go high level i guess got fancy with it and they've also placed it in here and then reporting i don't like to look at statistics or data from ghl um, i like to just go straight into the ads manager um, maybe i'm old school However, I do like using the call reporting. Uh, this is very useful, especially if you have VAs, so you know that they're doing their job, um, and it'll give you some really good statistics on the calls that are being made. So next video, we'll go over settings, everything in the settings. Um, but yeah, this was just, a, again, just a quick overview where everything is, and we'll have specific videos on what everything does. All right, in the last video, we went over um, everything on the sub-account level except the settings. And now in this one, on the bottom left, we're going to hit settings, and we're going to go over specific settings inside the sub-account. So let's just go top to bottom, um, starting with business profile. So this is where, and again, because we're in the sub-account, guys, all these settings are specific to the sub account specific to the client linked to the sub account but this is where we'll edit the business information uh, this is where we're going to edit the time zone time zone if you're booking in appointments or doing anything based on time make sure the time zone is accurate this causes so many issues if it's if it's not um, business information i would get this filled out just because when you guys go to register a2p if you're sending out text campaigns, you'll need to do that. Um, this, for whatever reason, I've always had it filled out and I've never had an issue with registering A2P. Um, and I've seen some people say that they do have issues with A2P um, and they don't have this filled out or they might not have, um, it's not in here yet. Uh, oh, I just need to enable it. They might not have uh, their business registered with Go High Level, but we'll, we'll have a specific video on that, of course. Now, down here under general, um, there are some settings. So you might want to allow duplicate opportunities. You might not. Um, that basically means can a lead be placed in the pipeline twice? Um, disable contact time zone. So this is a big one. Um, so if I would almost always have this one disabled, actually, because it, it, as long as you're running... Um, this for local businesses, I would definitely have this disabled at least because if a lead is using a VPN or if they're on vacation and they're in a different time zone, the appointment reminders and everything for that lead is going to be based off of their device's current location, which could obviously cause some issues. Um, so I would go ahead and disable this. The only time I would not disable this is if you're running something for coaches uh, that work like nationwide or maybe worldwide. Um, or something similar to that. Okay. Um, I so I personally come in here and disable all this compliance bullshit. It's it's actually the first thing that I do when I set up a new sub account. I don't care about uh, being compliant personally. Um, 
I'm not suggesting anybody does this. I'm just letting you guys know what I do. I don't like having uh, any of the compliance things linked to the account uh, just because it makes the, all the copy seem you know, sub or get less than organic. Um, and the more organic you make your messages seem, the better that they convert. So I would go ahead and disable all this. or I, I disable all this. You guys can do whatever you want. Uh, allow duplicate contact is pretty self-explanatory. Um, if a lead opts in on the Facebook ad twice, for example, can they be placed twice in your contacts and in the pipeline twice? Uh, yes or no. I like to disable this uh, or keep this disabled just because if they are in, let's say they're in an appointment book stage and they opt into the ad again, I don't want them to also be getting opt-in texts while booked in with an appointment it just it, it throws things off things are a little bit funky um but this i would if you guys have uh some weird things going on with your automations i would come in here and check this um because it could obviously cause some issues um based on how you're using go high level this is something that i personally always disable it it just seems kind of strange to me um, if somebody calls you, I would just call them back instead of texting them. But if you're, uh, if you notice in the conversations that every time somebody calls you, they get a text and you want to know how to turn that off. This is where the setting is. Okay, cool. So my staff. So if you guys want to add a VA, this is where you would do it. If you guys want to give your clients access to the go high level, uh, which I recommend against for a number of reasons. Uh, if you But if you want to, this is where you would do that. Pipelines, we'll have a specific video on this and we also kind of touched on it in the previous video. Go High Level just likes to place the same thing in multiple locations, um, but this is where you can create new pipelines as well. Calendars, we'll have a specific video on calendars. Uh, phone numbers. Again, we'll have a specific video on phone numbers, but this is where you would add uh, a new phone number. I just need to enable it in the uh, agency level settings. Um, so yeah, reputation management. Uh, again, so if, if you're running uh, Google reviews, you can place the, uh, you can actually do this. You can connect their Google My Business and generate a link, or you can just place the link in here. Um, and then run review campaigns and go high level kind of already has it built out for you. Now, I, I personally like just building out this workflow on my own because you have more control. You can edit it. You can send follow up texts, uh, but we'll have a specific video exactly uh, on exactly how you can do that. Custom fields and custom values. We're going to have videos on both of these. But one thing to note is that custom fields are linked to the forms and custom values are uh something that you can change information and it will syndicate throughout the entire sub account basically domains if you want to link a domain so if you're running a funnel you will need to link a domain this is where you would do that and don't worry we'll have a specific video on linking domains media so if you're using uh any kind of logos any kind of uh videos vsls uh client pictures testimonial pictures anything like that uh, this is where all of that is stored, and this is sub-account specific. Everything that we're talking about is sub-account specific, obviously, but um, the media will be as well. URL redirects. Um, we'll, we'll have a specific video about this with the domains. Integrations, pretty self-explanatory here. One thing I do want to bring up right away, even though we will have a specific video on this, is if you're running Facebook form fields, or, or uh, Facebook lead ads or TikTok lead ads, uh, this is where you would map those forms. Okay. Email services. Uh, this is a big one because deliverability uh, is obviously a big issue. We'll have a specific video about this. One thing to note if you guys are skipping that video, uh, which is totally fine if you want to skip it, because I would recommend against running email campaigns. Definitely do not do cold outreach through Go High Level. It just does not work well. You will run into deliverability issues. Um, however, we'll have a video on this specifically. 
Okay. And then the last one is tags. Okay. Tags are, uh, you can tag a customer or something. So if you want to tag them as a new lead, if you want to tag them as an appointment booked, uh, you can do that. Tags act as a few different uh, things on go high level, like you can use them to trigger a certain workflow. You can, uh, which basically just means initiating an automated process. Um, you could use them to identify leads. So you can go into your contacts and, um, you'll be able to filter all the new leads based off of a tag. But again, we'll have a specific video about tags. So this video will be covering why it is so important. It's going to be a very quick video, but why it is so important to isolate clients to their own sub account. I've touched on it in a few previous videos, but I really want to harp on it here. And it's so important. And I've seen so many people make this mistake. They quickly learn and they quickly, they quickly fix it because it causes so many issues. Um, but it is very important. Why is it important? Well, you can only connect one Facebook account per sub account. So if you're running Facebook ads and you're directing all the lead flow through go high level, which you should be doing, you can only connect one Facebook account, right? You can only connect one Google, my business account. All the conversations um, are, are in one spot. So you don't want to be handling different client conversations from the same inbox. Um, the calendar booking, all the, this is an important one. If you go into settings and you have anything uh, in business settings linked up to really anything going on in the account, which you will most likely, you can only have one set of business settings, obviously, like you can only have one address. Um, I guess you can change the location on specific calendars, but it's much easier to just do the address. The entire account can only run from one time zone, which is a big one. Um, your staff, if you have VAs managing um, the account, or better yet, if you have your clients um, on the go high level, which I do recommend against, but if you do that, you obviously don't want them to see other clients' data. It can get very sloppy. Phone numbers. Um, you can link multiple phone numbers. However, you can only send from one phone number at a time. So you have to come in here into phone numbers, and we'll have a video on this, but you can only have one phone number selected at a time defaulted to be the, like the primary phone number. So you don't want to be sending uh, messages for multiple clients from the same number. Again, it just gets sloppy. It gets messy. Uh, it's just not a good way to run it. And a few other reasons um, why, but I, I do want to keep this video short. Definitely guys, 100%. Um, make sure that each client has their own sub account. So if I had a client, Easy Grow GHL course, this would be their, their account. If I had a client, Zach Pasco, this would be their account. If I signed another client, John Doe, they would have their own account. It's really not an option. Um, you absolutely have to be doing this.